Welcome to question 4 of the 2010 Mathematical Methods Exam 1. In this video we will be looking at the solution and examination advice for this question. A reminder that this video is in no way endorsed by VCAR. For question 4a we're asked to write down the amplitude and period of the function f with a rule 4 sine of x plus pi divided by 3. Before we go too far into this question I'm just going to rewrite the rule as being 4 sine and then this could be written as 1 third times x plus pi. Now we can get on to calculating the amplitude and the period. So if we look at the period first, that is going to equal 2 pi on n for a sine or a cosine function, where the value of n is the thing that's multiplying x, so in this case n equals a third. Therefore the period is equal to 2 pi divided by a third, which is equal to 2 pi and we can multiply by the reciprocal which is 3 over 1 so therefore the period is equal to 6 pi the amplitude is relatively straightforward to find when your function is given in this form because it's simply the number that's multiplying the sine or the cosine function but we would ignore the sine on it if it was negative so therefore the amplitude for this function is 4 so they are the two answers that we need to give for part A of this question. So from the examiner's report we can see that most students gave the correct response for the amplitude. However it was disappointing to see the number of students who had the incorrect period, a common mistake being 6 rather than 6 pi. So it's really important that you know how to calculate the period for a sine, cosine or even a tangent graph. For part B of question 4 we're asked to solve the equation root 3 sine of x equals cos of x for x is an element of negative pi to pi included. So because this equation has sine and cosine in it, we're going to divide both sides of the equation by cos of x, so that we have an equation just involving one trig function, and that will turn into tan of x, because we know the ratio of sine on cos is the definition of tan. So therefore, we're actually asked to solve the equation root three, and the left-hand side would give tan of x, we have sine divided by cos is 10 and then cos divided by cos is going to equal 1. So we can still simplify this further and we would say that tan of x is equal to 1 divided by the square root of 3 and that's just by dividing both sides of that equation by root 3 and rationalizing the denominator if you wanted to would be root 3 over 3. Next we need to consider our unit circle and work out what angles x would give root 3 on 3 as the exact value for tan. So we know that the tan exact values are read off a tangent line that's drawn to the curve at this point. And we know that there's a pattern to the exact values that goes root 3 on 3, 1 and root 3. So we need the smallest angle here which is pi on 6. And that will give us a tan value of root 3 over 3. The other quadrant which will give positive root 3 on 3 is back here and that would be equivalent to 7 pi on 6 if we're going around the unit circle. However, that's outside of the domain. So we need to go the negative direction and we would find that this is a second solution and that would be minus 5 pi on 6. So that means that our x values that satisfy this equation are going to be pi on 6, so that was the first positive angle that we found, and then the second value would be x equals minus 5 pi on 6. So they are the two values between negative pi and pi that satisfy the given equation in this question. So from the examiner's report we can see that close to 40% of students got this completely correct, while a third of students were on the right track. So overall the comment was that this question was very poorly done, and most students who identified the equation involving tan were not able to solve it. So it's a really important reminder that solving trig equations is a very important skill that students need to have.